Good morning. It's Sunday, May 22nd, 2022, and uh, I've canceled in-person services for today. I can't believe we're three years into this pandemic and uh, we're still doing that, but we haven't in a long time. We got a few folks sick though, and they reported to me yesterday. Nobody at my house, I wanna keep it that way. So I'm here at church uh, this morning. I just told everybody, stay home. I'll have some uh, web content up a little later. So I'm gonna do that uh, for you, do that for, for me and try and minister here a little bit. I've got a couple announcements. Um, we have some music coming up this summer, some gospel music. You want to mark your calendars here at First Baptist Church in Wyoming, Illinois. On Father's Day, and this is, uh, we've got the camera turned around. So this is Forever His Ministries. You can see the picture of Philip and Diane Crow. No strangers here to First Baptist Church in Wyoming, but they're going to be here on Father's Day this year, which is Sunday, June 19th at 1030 a.m. And they sing all original songs and minister to us. Uh, on that morning and you're invited invite other folks and then uh, for the first time ever we had last year we had the David Warren family in they're from Georgia the state of Georgia and they do kind of a southern gospel I would even call it bluegrass I don't know that he does playing steel guitar and bass and singing he sang some old happy Goodman songs and everything else when they were here last year they're going to be here on Sunday July 17th in the morning only at uh, 10 30 a.m. service. And this morning, I'm going to go ahead and preach. And hopefully some folks listen. Uh, watch this after I put it up on YouTube. Before I do that, I want to sing a song. I'm not a singer, but you can sing along right there where you are. And I've got this old Stamps Baxter blue book out. If you have one of those, you probably don't. If you go to church here, you might. It's page 27, Mansion Over the Hilltop. Jesus said in the book of John, Gospel of John, it's recorded for us, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. I think this song might be based on that uh, text. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below. A little silver and a little gold But in that city where the ransom will shine I'll have a gold one that silver line I've got a mansion just over the hilltop In that bright land where we'll never grow Nevermore wander, but walk the streets that our purists go. Though often tempted, tormented and tested, and like the prophet, my pillow was stone. Though I find here no permanent dwelling, I know he'll give me. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. Someday yonder we'll never more wander, but walk the streets that our purest go. Don't think me poor old, deserted or Search of a city. I'll have a mansion, a harp and a crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never go. And someday yonder, we'll never more wander, but walk the streets that. Amen. All right. Let me get everybody.
everything ready here for preaching. All right, my text this morning is from Romans chapter 15. We'll begin reading in verse 1. Writings of the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 15, verse 1 through 7, where the Apostle wrote, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. And I'll stop there for this morning. The Christians talk a lot about blessings or being blessed. And we should. Nothing wrong with that. God has bestowed his grace upon us. He is merciful towards us daily. He has provided many things for us, even in the midst of trial and struggle. The subject of modern contemporary Christian music and much modern preaching is often about being blessed. But the teaching of Christ and of the New Testament would encourage us to be more focused on striving to be a blessing rather than constantly looking to receive one. There is a, there's a difference there. We even go to church looking for a blessing. I mean, looking to be encouraged and to get or receive something spiritual to be edified. And we look for a place like that. You know, we want to go to a church uh, that, that we're, where we're fed. You hear people say that. Where I can get something out of it, you know. And, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That's a good thing. But sometimes we don't think about this other thing. And that is a bad thing when we don't. I've heard preachers begin a sermon with the question, you know, who came out here today looking to be blessed? But shouldn't I really be asking this? How many of you, there's nobody here today but me, but how many of you came out uh, to God's house today to be a blessing? To be a blessing to others, to encourage others. Have you thought about that? To help bear someone's burden with them. You say, well, I want to feel loved. Are we showing that? Are we extending that? Are we expressing that? Are we living that? Are we walking that? Are we being a blessing? Jesus' statement in the Gospels, it is more blessed to give than to receive, just that statement alone shows that the modern focus seems to be sometimes quite misguided. The old hymns we sometimes sing, there's one that we sing that says, make me a channel of blessing today. Make me a channel of blessing, I pray. Not, you know, the old saying is the buck stops here. The end all be all. While most modern Songs focus on the blessings that are coming to you. And when believers don't see the expected bestowment of blessings in their lives the way that they want to see them, it sometimes leaves them despondent and discouraged. And so we come to this text this morning, Romans chapter 15, beginning in verse 1. I just read it. Paul addresses, he says, we that are strong. And you say, well, that rules me out, preacher. So I'm one of those that's just weak and moping around and I'm the one that needs help. And sadly in 2022, uh, maybe a majority of Christians consider themselves being that case. So who's gonna help who, right? What does this mean though? We that are strong. And so I wonder today, if you think that rules you out, are, are you a babe in Christ? Are you a new Christian? Did you just become a believer? You've not been a believer for years or for decades, right? You haven't been in church and solidified and grounded. So this statement does not refer to someone who is not struggling or suffering because in truth, that, that sort of Christian doesn't exist, even the preachers, right? It's not talking about somebody who has it all together because there's nobody who has it all together. The apostle Paul is the author and he includes himself. He says, we that are strong. And so then in his writings, he just lays out how honest he struggles with his flesh, 
finds himself doing the things he knows he shouldn't do, finds himself not doing sometimes things he knows God wants him to do. He talks about <coughs> the struggle between the flesh and the spirit. And so we know the trouble in his life. We know the persecution in his life. We know the want in his life. We know that he wrote many of these epistles from prisons. He had been beaten. He'd been shipwrecked. He was an outcast. He was rejected. So <clears throat> he wasn't physically strong. And his life wasn't, you know, a bed of roses. And it wasn't always, from the human perspective, a life of prosperity. Yet he includes himself in this. He says, we that are strong. I think he's referring to spiritually mature believers. You know, and everybody's always talking about what they know about the Bible. I know my Bible, and I know I don't even need to go to church. You know, I'm, I'm so spiritual. Yet they may not want to include themselves in this, we that are strong. But maybe we, maybe we should be among those that are strong. Doesn't mean we don't have struggles. I think he's referring to those who are grounded in the faith. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know where you're going when you die? Do you know your sins are forgiven? Amen. Is, is, is the Spirit of God living within you? I mean, do you have genuine faith? We that are strong. I don't have it all together. Anybody close to me can tell you that. But the truth is, there are too few who in our day are not among those that are grounded in the faith, mature believers. But that shouldn't be. Man, that should not be the case. We have more Bibles. We have more churches. We have comfortable churches. We have so many avenues of teaching and ministry. We have this. I've canceled services today, but if you want to be ministered to, you can still, and you're part of this church, or you, you want to listen to this preacher, you can still do this, right? But sadly, most believers are still looking for what's in it for them. What can you offer? I've been a pastor for a long time, nearly uh, approaching 30 years. You know how many times I've had people ask me, you know, basically just outright ask me, what, what can you offer me? What can you offer my family? What can you offer? Well, here, I'm, I'm showing you this morning a little bit what this little country church offers, amen. <clears throat> but I feel like sometimes asking, you'd run a lot of them off. They walk in and you just turn around and a preacher ask them, what can you offer? We that are strong, we that are strong, what's in it for me? So he says, we that are strong, we ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, here in verse one. Now, who are the weak? They're all around us. That's for sure. In the day we live in, they're all around us. You might say, but I'm I'm weak, preacher. And, and that, that's probably true to an extent for every one of us. So there's going to be times where we minister to one another, right? It's reciprocal. What we need to learn is to edify one another, to love one another, to build one another up, to encourage one another, because none of us are very good at encouraging our own selves, are we? We're never encouraged to do so because, I mean, we try, but we don't, we don't, we're not very good at it. As a matter of fact, here in verse 1, he says, and not to please ourselves. Think about that. Not to please ourselves, which is exactly what our nature leads us to do. This is one of the most unnatural things about our calling. And when I say that, I mean unnatural to our fleshly, sinful nature. Actually committing our lives to the service of others is a struggle. But it is exactly what Christ has called us to do. The natural tendency is to take care of number one or to be self-absorbed and, and to be self-interested. And so we see much of that in our day. The apostle Paul knew that the seeking of pleasure is the constant enemy of service of Christ and of others. Acquiring stuff and experiences. And if I'm not having a good time, I mean at every moment, and I'm not laughing and I'm not enjoying it, Self-interest causes disinterest in the infirmities and deficiencies that are all around us this morning. When, when we are self-interested, we will easily uh, be often offended, but blinded to any offense we might cause through our own words, actions, or failures towards others. As we follow Christ, we learn the great ministry of edification and encouragement. William Arthur Ward said, flatter me and I may not believe you. Criticize me and I may not like you. Ignore me and I may not forgive you, but encourage me and I will not forget you. We need to be in the business of edification. The Bible uses that word, practicing exhortation. 
As followers of Christ, love and compassion and action ought to be our daily habit. Now this word edification, here in verse two, edification. It literally means to build up. You, maybe you're familiar with the word edifice, which would mean a, a structure, right? And now we're talking about people. We're to edify one another. So what are we to do? We're to build one another up. We're to put mortar in place. We're to fill the cracks. We're to make things strong. Not just for ourselves, but for those, I mean, if we're, no, if we're so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good, why are we here? We're not here just to serve ourselves, which is what the day we've come to. We're here to serve God. But Paul told the Galatians that by love, you serve one another. And I have news for you. If we're not serving those around us, we're not serving God. People talk about serving God. Going to church is not serving God. Singing songs and beautiful voice and much more beautiful than mine. You know? So if to edify is to build, and we are commanded in scripture to edify one another, then we should be ever careful to never discourage or tear down. Your words, your actions, your spirit will either build and bind or tear down and destroy. My dad used to say there was two crews at the church house. There's building crew and wrecking crew. And you might not realize which crew you're on. Number two, verse two also says, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good edification. In this statement, we see the broadness of our calling to edification. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. Neighbor is a non-specific term. There's not somebody, when you say neighbor, you, there's nobody named there. In scripture, it's sort of all inclusive. Commands is how to treat sinners or our fathers, something specific. That's very specific people. We have that sort of instruction in the Bible too toward the household of faith. But when it comes to our great callings from Christ, which are founded in his gospel, we are called to minister to our neighbors. In other words, our fellow men. In other words, he says, love thy neighbor as thyself. And here he says, edify your neighbors. We're real good at edifying and encouraging sometimes particular people and sometimes ignoring or shutting out other particular people. But let me tell you, every encounter that you have, even in your own home, every, even small, every encounter is an opportunity. Every conversation is an opportunity to minister. And it's also a building or wrecking opportunity. <clears throat> Verse three, he says, even Christ pleased not himself. Wow. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. And you know, really wow is the best thing I can say about this verse. Both statements in this verse are powerful and humbling. Even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. In other words, Christ willingly bore the sins of his own persecutors. He served us, he served us all, but in following him, so often we fail to serve one another and supposedly following him, following in his footsteps, walking after him and after his ways. Jumping to verse five, he says, uh, you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. So I already said this is reciprocal, didn't I? To learn this would help us all so much. <clears throat> You say, but I need help. So to, for everybody to learn this aspect of what ministry really is, ministry is people. Get, there's nobody God's put in our lives that's there by accident. <clears throat> and the gospel calling, it calls us out of this world, out of the darkness, uh, out, of the, out of the hatred and, and into light and into love and into service. He says, you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. You see, it's a two-way street. This service, this love, and this care is reciprocal for believers. Well, what is God's will today as it pertains to you and I walking together and worshiping together and knowing uh, one another? I mentioned Paul touched on these things in the book of Galatians. I want to read a couple of texts, just two. Galatians chapter six, verse two, he says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And in chapter five of Galatians, verse 13 and 14, he wrote, brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. 
You say, well, I'm free. I can go do what I want. Is that the sort of liberty he's talking about? Let's read further. Let's not stop there. Brethren, you've been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. That would be for your flesh. Don't use it to serve yourself, to make yourself happy. He says, but by love, serve one another. This is the purpose of our liberty. This is the reason he took, he cut us free from the bondage of sin, that we might by love serve one another. He says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, one command, right? Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now we see in verse six of our text in Romans that none of this is for man's glory or for man's purposes, but rather to God's glory in all situations. Ultimately, God is glorified when we learn to be a blessing, when we learn not just to receive blessings and look for blessings. And if I'm not being blessed, I'm not happy and I'm not gonna be around here long and you don't have anything to offer me and we're gonna go somewhere where it's more comfortable and we can sit and we can just be a sponge and we can just absorb, right? And we can be happy all the time. But ultimately, God is glorified when we learn to be a blessing, when we learn to, by love, serve one another. God is not glorified in any way when we spend all of our time, energy, and focus on what my dad used to say, getting all we can and canning all we get. Yeah, getting all we can and canning all we get. Me and my four and no more. Verse seven, here it is revealed emphatically that our service toward one another is rooted and grounded in and motivated by the gospel itself. The gospel which was given to us and God's mercy which was extended to us through Jesus Christ. You see that in verse seven? Let me read that again. Wherefore receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. We give because we've received. I mean, you think about the goodness of God. You think about the forgiveness of sins and there's nothing bigger or greater than that. You say, well, I'm not very blessed. I'm gonna tell you something. You're not gonna live here forever, but you're gonna live forever somewhere. And if you've got genuine faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you can lay your head on your pillow tonight and know that if you don't wake up here, you know where you'll wake up to sleep no more. And walking in that light, amen, in the city uh, that God has prepared, a city not made by hands. Listen, you're blessed more than you wanna admit or realize. But we give because we've received. We love because we have been loved by him. The gospel opens our hearts and minds to these truths and to living our lives this way. And by the way, be a blessing. And perhaps God will send someone to be a blessing to you. You see, if we could get this right in our day and age, 2022, we're back to the roaring 20s again, aren't we? instead of being self-absorbed. Sometimes we're afraid to, to turn around and be the servant because we're convinced if we do, we're gonna be the only one that's doing it. That sort of feeling. And I've said multiple times through this sermon, this is a two-way street, this is reciprocal. You're trying to solve all your own problems and not doing very well at it trying to fix everything in your life and falling short. If we'd actually be a blessing as God calls us to do, and that catches on, perhaps God would send someone to be a blessing to you. We bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Well, thank you for listening this morning. Hopefully we'll be back together in person really soon. And I'm glad nobody at my house is sick. That's why we're doing it this way this morning. God bless you.